Hi, uh, we're Marks and Spencer. We're a uh, group making a proposal to step into the new growth market of Argentina. Um, so Marks and Spencer started in 1884 by Michael Marks um, in Leeds, Yorkshire, which is northern England. Um, and he started off with a penny bazaar where he uh, had products and he had a sign, an outside bazaar with a sign that said, don't ask the price, it's only a penny. Um, in, in 1894, 10 years later after starting, he took, he, um, took over a partnership with T Thomas Spencer and together then Marks and Spencer was made. Um, Simon Marks, Michael Marks' son, um, took the com company to another level, um, started, started um, indoor stores and malls and things like that, and today uh, the company operates uh, more than 300 retail outlets in the United Kingdom with, a, with an additional 300 stores overseas in, in, in different countries such as France, Germany, Spain, and Hong Kong. Um, in 1998, uh, it became the first British retailer to make a pre-tax profit of over one billion pounds, uh, making it the number one retailer in, in Great Britain. Uh, products and service overview. The company, um, the company sells uh, different products such as homeware, uh, clothing, and food. Their clothing is divided with, into menswear, womenswear, lingerie, and, uh, and, ch and children's um, children's clothing. Uh, then their home products uh, obviously range from uh, uh, sorry. Their home products are, uh, is something else they provide and also food. So they started something called Simply Foods which, uh, which prepared um, fresh produce and groceries as well as, as um, pre-prepared meals. Um, just to give you an idea of the global uh, reach that uh, Marks & Spencer has, there's 76,000 people working for it globally in over 41 countries. And the way that its products are, are, are distributed in terms of sales is 49% of its business is, comes from clothing and, home, and homeware sales, whereas 51% <laughs> comes from its food um, and grocery outlets. Uh, these, these are the international operations of Marks & Spencer. As uh, you can tell, very global. They, Pierce the, the, east, the southern and eastern European market, as well as the Far East in China, in China and uh, North, in South Korea, as well as Southeast Asia. Um, what's interesting is India. India was is their one of their newest uh, operations. Sixteen stores are there, and uh, they did this through a joint venture with uh, Indian corporate giant Reliance. So you. And in uh, last fiscal year, 2009 and 10, 34 new stores were opened globally. It just gives you an idea of their international operations. The market that we're proposing for Marks and Spencer to enter next is Argentina. Argentina, uh, according to the IMF, has the highest GDP per capita in South America. Um, and we all know about the we all know about the economic collapse that Argentina has been through. But now. Um, a projected 9.5 percent growth for 2010, um, better infrastructure, corrupt, um, corruption cases against the government, and just strengthening the institutions in Argentina makes it a, a lot uh, a better attractive market for Marks and Spencer. And um, as I said, the highest GDP in South America makes it the number one market for us wanting to enter. Um, the environment overview in Argentina we've determined is that it's slightly risky to enter. Um, politically, right now, the Front for Victory Party is in charge. <coughs> Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner is the president, and she took over from her husband, who was president from 2003 to 2007. Politically, Argentina throughout the 20th century has seen a lot of political instability, but right now, there haven't been any major problems since 1990, so we're hoping that it's going to stabilize and stay there. Economically, again, it's at the highest GDP per capita in South America at 14525 international dollars. Um, second to that is Chile in South America. And again, the GDP is predicted to increase in 2010. Legally, um, not many countries are investing in Argentina because there's nine steps involved in investing that range from establishing a board of directors to getting certain documents notarized and Many of these documents have to go to separate agencies, and it's kind of a complicated process. The average tariff is also 16%, so that's something to watch out for. Culturally, Argentina has a population of 36 million, and it's 92% Roman Catholic. 
Our competitive analysis of Argentina, we've determined that there are other competitors like us with a sophisticated upper middle class target market. Um, <coughs> these competitors include Banana Republic, Gap, Macy's, Zara, Polo, Ralph Lauren, and Guess. Again, they offer upscale apparel. Um, our strengths in the retail market include an ability to adapt, as you'll see in the adapted store in the next slide. Um, we can expand into new markets given our size, and we can innovate our product lines. Again, this is the adaptation you can see in the dressing rooms going from something that looks you know, a little bit darker. You see changes in the lighting. It's a much brighter environment, a much more modern environment meant to attract new consumers. Uh, we've determined that the product will have to be slightly altered in Argentina. Uh, it, similar, we're hoping that it can be similar to the home market, but given that tastes are different and we may have to tailor it, these are some things that we have to take into account. Again, other similar brands, including Gap and Banana Republic, have already broken into Argentina and have seen success, specifically in Buenos Aires, where they've opened up multiple stores. And we have determined that targeting the upper middle class could be the most <coughs> beneficial to Marks and Spencer. We recommend a franchise in Argentina with the ability for us to take more control as the store is more successful. We're hoping to export from the UK, but then if it is successful, opening up a manufacturing plant to determine that, or to make as much as much as close as possible um, to save on import costs. Uh, this incremental strategy will help <coughs> us have the highest um, return and will help us um, take, take more control as we're more successful. Uh, all right, the brand of Marks & Spencer um, hinges upon their quality products at an affordable price. And when entering the market in Argentina, we'd have to adapt this brand to the market. Um, their slogan is quality worth every penny. So we'd have to translate that into Spanish. And then um, in translation, make sure that it retains the same meaning as before. Uh, we want to standardize our brand so that it's consistent with the brand in the UK. And make sure that we maintain that it has affordable pricing uh, and the same high quality standards that we have in the UK market as in Argentina. Um, Marks & Spencer has an extended product line that's targeted towards each uh, segment of the market. They have men's wear, kids wear, women's wear, and lingerie, in addition to um, home furnishings and food products as well. Um, when entering Argentina, we'd have to adapt our product to the local market. Um, recently in <coughs> India, they entered a joint venture with Reliance Retail, and some of the concerns with the Indian consumer was that jackets are rarely worn in the heat, so they had to add product or pockets to the outside of their polo shirts, as well as they wanted more color variations in their shirts. So they added three times as many colored shirts to their shirts in India as in the UK market. Um, we can use this knowledge of um, in new, the new markets that they've expanded into when entering into Argentina and adapt our product to the local Argentinian consumer. Um, Marks and Spencer's International Range Planner uh, allows for the products to be tailored to the local consumer and stock the right sizes and colors um, for the demand specific to the uh, region in Argentina. Um, our price, it hinges upon being um, affordable. Um, when entering Argentina, we'd set our price at a lower, uh, lower mark than our competitors and then pending positive uh, revenues, we'd increase it until it's consistent with, the, um, with that of in the UK. Um, we offer a wide range of projects. Our stylish and modern wear would be more expensive than our casual wear market. Um, then uh, we want to make sure that we can keep it consistent and we offer the quality products and stay affordable at the same time. That way we can ca capture a wide market share from the middle classes to the upper classes.